You are watching The Valley on ESPN. Tonight we bring you a non-conference matchup featuring a pair of teams trying to find their stride before the calendar turns to 2023. It's the Eastern Michigan Eagles and the Illinois State Redbirds. Hi everybody, welcome courtside to SEFQ Arena alongside Kelly Burke. I'm Scott Sudikoff, happy to have you with us here tonight. And Kelly, as I mentioned, a pair of teams uh, that have had ups and downs so far through the first month of the campaign. Illinois State coming off a season high, 87 points, 20 assists, and 13 trays. Their offense really sinking. Eastern Michigan, no problem scoring the ball, but looking to have major improvements on a defense that's giving up 82 plus points per game. Now the star to watch out for for Eastern Michigan, he played at Memphis for one year, transferred home to Ypsilanti, Amani Bates. Guardy Monty Bates is a former five-star recruit and a projected NBA draft pick. An elite level scorer, leads the MAC 21 points per game. He's got a great turnaround, good touch, finishes well through contact, and the Eagles love to isolate him one-on-one. -on -one. And for Illinois State, coming in off his two best games of the season, Liam McChesney. For Liam McChesney, a breakout performance in that Belmont win, career high 25 points. A versatile for head coach Ryan Peden says he's a special talent. McChesney can post you up, he can pick and pop, and he can stretch the floor shooting and stepping out and hitting that three with efficiency. All right, Kelly, let's check out what you have for the keys to the game for this one. For the Eagles, improved interior defense. They've given up a combined 50 points in the paint the last two games, and they have to box out when they stay very active on the offensive glass. For the Redbirds, they have to make it really tough on Imani Bates. Make him take tough shots, and they have to minimize the unforced force turnovers. Too many shot clock violations in the game against Belmont and dead ball turnovers. Eagles and Redbirds for the 32nd time all time. These two pre programs meeting up. Last year, Eastern Michigan beating the Redbirds in double overtime at Ypsilanti, 102-98. Eastern Michigan wins the opening tip. And they'll have the basketball first with Noah Farrakhan, Tyson Acuff, Amani Bates, Yusuf Jihad, and Legend Jeter. And you'll notice how much Eastern Michigan likes to spread you out offensively. They like to get players in one-on-one -on -one situations. Body Bates with the first shot of the game, a three-pointer miss, and a rebounding foul is called on Yusuf Jihad on Eastern Michigan. Really nice job. Seneca Knight had the inside position on the box out, able to get the over-the-back call. Here's your Illinois State starting line. Starting lineup brought to you by your Illinois Ford dealers. And a change in the lineup today. You got Knight, Burford, McKenzie, and Lewis. But Malachi Poindexter unavailable today for the Redbirds. So Colton Sandage getting the start for the fourth time this year. McKenzie misses short. And the rebound off the floor for Jihad. I like the decision, though, to play through McChesney to start this game. He's very comfortable on that left block posting up. Acuff driving, losing it. His last touch by Colton Sandage. And Kelly mentioned that Poindexter not playing today, a hamstring issue keeping him out of the lineup. It is, and it's an adjustment because Poindexter's been playing so well at that point guard spot. So Colton Sandage with some big shoes to fill. Jihad for three, and that's good. Eastern Michigan gets on the board first. Jihad getting the start tonight in place of Jalen Billingsley. All the hands of Kendall Lewis. Swings it now for Burford. Nick Chesney eyes the rim, gets in the lane, dumps it off, and Lewis missing in close. All the hands of Bates. Gives it off to Farrakhan, who led the Eagles in scoring last year, scored over 16 and a half points per game, and there's a lay-in from legend Jeter. And Jeter is one of the guys that makes this Eagles offense tick. He's a good facilitator, and they want to get him touches in the paint area. Talked about off the top, Eastern Michigan scoring and not an issue. Over 75 points a game, and they shoot 45%. Just defensively, they are the bottom 10 in a couple of key categories when it comes to field goal percentage defense and points allowed as Lewis 
will throw that away, and I'd call that an unforced error. And Lewis now, that's basically two turnovers that shot on the last trip down the floor just should have gone off glass. Aaron shot and then miscommunication on where he thought his teammate was going to be in that corner. Eastern Michigan coming in off a loss at home on Sunday to Florida Atlantic. Gave up 101 points, lost 101-73. to And the Owls shot 60% in that game. Bates is called for the travel. As players are not getting away with that as much as maybe they used to, that, uh, that step over or the step back for the three-point shot. And a really nice job of Liam McChesney stepping out and hedging. Kendall Lewis had been taken totally out of that play. And so Bates looking to get an open shot, but McChesney with his length taking that away, forcing the travel call. Illinois State, its biggest win of the season this past Saturday. Getting their first Valley win of the year after dropping the overtime heartbreaker to Murray State. In the lane and the slam dunk for Seneca Knight. Knight has just really settled into this Redbird offense and does a really nice job physically attacking the rim. Farrakhan will take the three. Miss it strong. And the rebound, McChesney coming off a career high, 25 points. He's 9 of 12 from the field on Saturday. Fading away, Lewis missed it short. I like what Illinois State is doing offensively, though. They are attacking and going right at Imani Bates, trying to get him into early foul trouble, dumping that ball into Kendall Lewis. Foul was called. Check it out again here, Kendall. Well, the dunk before from uh, Seneca Knight. Foul was on Bates, and Lewis's free throw pops out. 78% free throw shooter this year. Averaging a team best, 12.6 points per game, close to eight rebounds per contest. Lewis has become such a focal point for opposing defenses, really trying to take what he was doing in the first three games of the season away. Some three-quarter court pressure from the Redbirds. Acuff, sophomore from Detroit, transferred from Duquesne. Played the last two seasons there in Pittsburgh. Farrakhan, the pass to the cutting legend Jeter. Lays it up and in. Four points now for Jeter. A really nice job. Acuff finding the big man and taking a second, collecting himself, squaring up his shoulders for that shot on the run. McChesney cut off at the free throw line by Bates. Good defense in the turnover. Up ahead to Bates. Has to kick it out. Entered into Jihad. Up with the right hand and doesn't get the bounce. Sandage the pass over the top of McChesney. Can't get his hands on it. And it's turned over by the Redbirds. And so that's an Illinois State turnover. Their third of the game. We've got a timeout with 15.46 to go first half. Eastern Michigan 7, Illinois State 3. Illinois State leads the all-time series against Eastern Michigan, but the Eagles have won the last two meetings, including last year's double double overtime thriller in which Eastern Michigan had trailed by 16, came back to win 103-98. Big thing about that, though, is there's not a lot of the same faces. Carry over. Four transfers that are largely a new team for both of these squads, Illinois State, a remade team with a new coach and new offense, Eastern Michigan, a lot of new places as well with the four transfers. Keep in mind, too, Eastern Michigan, they're coming off a game that they lost by 28 points at home. So they have some extra motivation here on the road to redeem themselves for how bad they played in that loss to FAU. Especially defensively for Eastern Michigan. They gave up 101 points for the second time this season. And the Owls shot 60% in that game. See the 349th in the country. There, you're, you're right towards the bottom. And... Points allowed, field goal percentage defense, over 50% opponent shooting against Eastern Michigan. So far today, Illinois State, though, is one for four with three turnovers, so a little bit better for the Eagles thus far. For Illinois State, it's all going to be about focus here in these next four minutes to the next media timeout, especially on the offensive end, minimizing those unforced turnovers. 
some changes in the Eastern Michigan lineup. Jalen Billingsley and Orlando Lovejoy have come on. This is Jeter, who's got a couple of buckets already, banging down low with Seneca Knight, gets his own rebound, and Lewis reaching in to knock it away. Nice job, Sanders coming away with that deflection from Lewis. Those are the types of plays, the effort plays that Lewis, you will see him make. No changes in the Redbird lineup. Nice backdoor cut, Burford, and the feed from McChesney. You can just see this Illinois State offense is clicking a lot better, reading the movements, especially that great backdoor cut from Darius Burford. 87 points against Belmont over the weekend for the Redbirds, a season high. Rebound snared by Seneca Knight. He'll push it ahead for Illinois State. McChesney open for three. Flying in for the rebound, Burford, and one of the smallest guys on the court gets the offensive rebound. And Burford, he's done a nice job the last couple of games on the boards, coming off an eight-rebound effort in that win over Belmont. He may be the smallest guy, but he's very active on the offensive glass. Billingsley the foul. He's averaging close to four rebounds a game. That's pretty good for a six-foot guard. Knight takes some contact, fades back, and hits. Knight doing a really nice job creating separation, being patient, seeing what the defense was going to give him, and converting. Four points out of the timeout for the Redbirds to tie the ball game up. Driving in McChesney. Clears that one out mm. on the attempt by Farrakhan. Trying to come down on his ankle. Three-pointer the other way is good for Kendall Lewis. Defense into offense for Illinois State. And you're right, McChesney now is uh, hopping over towards the end of the bench. And he is headed He's trying to run it, to run, Trying to run it off. And if we can get a replay, we might be able He may have gone into the, the backstop on that basket. Landed awkwardly, it looked like, on his ankle. So great defensive play by McChesney. He's jogged up the uh, tunnel, the Illinois State tunnel, and hasn't reemerged yet. That would be a huge blow because he has played so well the last two games. Redbirds are taking the lead on a 7-0 run. Defense to offense leads to the three-pointer from Kendall Lewis. Turnaround bounces out for Jalen Billingsley. Knocked out of bounds. Let's see what happened to uh, Liam McChesney, see if we can figure it out. Well, McChesney's been so active as a rim protector. Watching the way down, gets a little bit tangled up, and looks like he maybe just came down awkwardly on that right ankle. Back to live action here. Billingsley, excuse me, Farrakhan hits it. First bucket for Noah Farrakhan, sophomore transfer from East Carolina. I mentioned he led the Eagles last year in scoring at over 16 and a half per game. He's scoring 13 and a half this year. Farrakhan has really benefited. They've moved him more to the two guard spot this year instead of the point guard. His offense has really made a jump as a result. Four Illinois State turnovers now. Golson trapped out to Lovejoy. The true freshman hits it, three pointer for Orlando Lovejoy out of Detroit. Great recognition by the Eagles off the double team, finding the open man in Lovejoy, and Lovejoy connecting nothing but net on the three. Good answer by the Eagles after the 7-0 Redbird run, 5-0 for, uh, for Eastern Michigan as Ryan Schmidt checked into the game for McChesney. We have a walk from Seneca Knight and a fifth Illinois State turnover. Those are the unforced turnovers that we're talking about is not necessarily caused by the other team, just some happy feet by Seneca Knight. Luke Kazubke comes on for the first time today, replacing Colton Sandage. Acuff using the double screen, driving, floating it up, no good. Lewis grabs the rebound. He'll take it ahead. Trying to get it to the corner to Kazubke, and it's intercepted by Lovejoy. Lovejoy. Hand it off. Kevin David Rice playing in his third game of the season. Three-pointer wild from Billingsley. Second opportunity, though, and Rice gets fouled. And David Rice has really emerged here. Last two games had mono to start the season, but really is a steadying force on this Eagles offense. Foul whistled on Burford. First foul 
on Illinois State so far today. Under out of bounds here for the Eagles. Coming in with a two and seven record, have not yet started their conference season. Illinois State three and six, of course, splitting those first two Valley games. Last Thursday at Murray State, losing in overtime. And then this past Sunday here, knocking off Belmont 87 to 77. A bit of an historic win. Belmont had won 59 consecutive games when leading at halftime. They had a slim halftime lead, but uh, the Redbirds came back and won, of course. Redbirds came out on fire in that second half, especially from the beyond the arc. 13 threes in that game, the majority of them coming in the second half. Billingsley at the free throw line misses the first of two. Just a 38% free throw shooter. Which is always interesting because he's 61% from the field. <laughs> And a good three-point shooter as well at 57%. Makes the second. It is a whole different animal, though, being kind of steady at the free throw line. Nobody trying to defend you. It's very mental. Yep. Got to have a routine. There's a pickpocket by Lovejoy. Taking it away from Burford. He scores it. And the foul. Burford compounds the error committing his second foul and allowing Lovejoy to have a chance for a three-point play. We come back from a timeout, an 8-0 run by the Eagles, and they lead by 5, 15-10 here in the Valley on ESPN. Part of the big win over Belmont for Illinois State, Redbirds went three-point crazy. Man, look at that shot chart. Oh, look at him. so much on the left side of the court having success, but Illinois State, a season-high 13 trays in that win over Belmont, and beating the Bruins at their own game. The Belmont really known for their three-point shooting in that Princeton-style offense. Illinois State so far in this game, one of three from three. They've only taken eight shots, four of eight, because they've turned it over seven times, which has led right now to a six Eastern Michigan points. And the most recent was a steal by Orlando Lovejoy. Went coast to coast, got fouled by Burford, and now has a chance for a three-point play. I'd say that the message about a recommitment to defense has gone in through from Stan Heath with this team, this Eagles squad right now, being very aggressive in your face on the defensive end has already led to four steals in this game. That's why we see Eastern Michigan plus eight in field goal attempts in this game. Lovejoy completing the three-point play. He's got six points. And Lovejoy, a career-high three steals already in this game. Out of Summit Academy North in Michigan. Also then one prep year as well in Charlotte. Sandage fouled on the three-point shot, and he'll go to the free-throw line. Colton Sandage, one of the best three-point shooters on this Illinois State team. Always a threat from beyond the arc. Yeah, he made his lone three-point attempt in that game against Belmont. He's had three or more three-pointers three times this year. He's a streaky shooter, very capable of going off. It was a big part of heading into the half the other night in that win over Belmont, putting Illinois State in good position. Gets his first point today. He's five and six at the line this year. 5.4 points per game. He had a nine three-pointer game. In his time with Western Illinois, did that back in February of 2021 against Oral Roberts. So he said he can, uh, he can go off, and that's proof right there. This Illinois State team is not one that you want to put at the free throw line. 81% on the season among the national leaders in that area. And so you have to be able to defend the Redbirds without fouling. Sandage goes three for three. Redbirds snap. The 9-0 run from Eastern Michigan, so a game of runs thus far. Three-point Eagle lead. Lovejoy off to the baseline and rolls around and in. The other thing we're seeing Eastern Michigan do a much better job of in this game is sharing the basketball, making that extra pass. Six points now for Jeter is another foul here on Eastern Michigan. Don't see Liam McChesney on the Illinois State bench right now, which has to be concerning for 
First-year head coach Ryan Peden. Well, the Redbirds, are, they're already down a start on Malachi Poindexter. And keep in mind, too, Joe Petrakis, game-time decision with an ankle injury. Sandage with the Schmidt screen, takes the three, makes the three. So Colton Sandage gets things going at the free throw line and then drains the three-pointer the next time down. Good recognition, Illinois State, the high ball screen. Get the ball to the guy who has the hot hand in Colton Sandage. Acuff over to Lovejoy. Guarded by Sandage. Now the hands of Amani Bates has not yet scored tonight. Pulls up on Kazubki, missed it. And the rebound, Schmidt. This is a player, Bates, that has scored 50 or more points in every game this season. Right. Offensive foul. And right now, Imani Bates held scoreless. Hasn't gotten a, a lot of looks, just two shot attempts so far. Got that early foul drawn against Kendall Lewis. The offensive foul on Schmidt. His second foul, so he comes out. And checking in is Alex Kodov. He's only played in a total of 27 minutes so far this season. So Ryan P didn't have to go deeper in the bench here with McChesney currently not available. Well, that's why you even see Jaden Johnson in this game. He's in for Joe Petrakis. The junior from Batavia making his seventh appearance of the season. Good recovery by Johnson. Looks like it was going to be an easy lay-in. Jeter having a good day thus far. Misses off the right side of the iron. Right ahead by Knight. Finds Jaden Johnson in the corner for three. Jaden Johnson just his second made three-pointer in four attempts this year. Johnson making the most of his playing time with Petrakis, having... Had that ankle injury, normally on the scout team, but has hit some huge three-pointers these last two games. Redbirds are three of five from distance. Trying to answer. Acuff can't. Sandage the rebound and had trouble with the outlet pass. Open man, Knight for three. Clangs around and out. And the rebound for Noah Farrakhan. Farrakhan off the dribble, step back, misses it strong. Rebound, Knight. Farrakhan trying to take advantage of the mismatch he had with Kotov on him. In the lane, Knight got fouled. And it looks like it was on the floor before the shot. Sixth team foul. Second foul on Yusuf Jihad. Well, Knight at his best in the lane, attacking the pain, able to draw the foul. <laughs> Illinois State, one away from being in the bonus. Redbirds on a 6-0 run to reclaim the lead. Kazubki. Skips it to the corner, Johnson up fakes, drives baseline. Goes with the reverse lay-in. Really good patience by Johnson. He picked up his dribble, but still able to find his way in on the reverse lay-in. Played a career-high nine minutes against Belmont over the weekend. Might get more time tonight. He's already got five points. Billingsley slipped, kept his footing. Misses it short with the right-hand hook. Knight, Sandage, open, right side three, yes! Sandage red hot from three right now. So good on that step in three. And Illinois State doing a really nice job finding him in transition before that Eastern Michigan defense was set. Timeout called by Eastern Michigan. That'll give us immediate timeout with 8.20 left to go. Illinois State now on an 11-0 run. They take it a six-point lead here on the Valley on ESPN. Let's take a look at our Toyota out-of-town scoreboard in the Missouri Valley Conference. Evansville has an early lead on Campbell. Drake taking on Omaha with the slim advantage. we got a conference game tonight, Indiana State and SIU. The Sycamores with the 11-point lead. Missouri State taking on St. Mary's a little bit later on. Of course, conference season seemingly starts earlier and earlier every year, but a couple of games in for the Redbirds. They're 1-1 one and, one and will really 
get full-fledged in the conference season in a couple of weeks. We will, and got a nice preview in the last week. Illinois State losing in overtime to Murray State then coming back, getting their first home win against Belmont. That was a big one for the Redbirds. And right now, you got players for Illinois State, Colton Sandage leading the way, really filling roles with injuries, hitting these Redbirds hearts today. Yeah, Malachi Point, Dexter not available today with a hamstring injury. Joe Petrakis out with an ankle. Liam McChesney getting banged up in the first couple of minutes of this game has left the game and has not yet come back to the bench. And the Redbirds, though, are on a 14-2 run over the last three minutes in 40 seconds to have this 24-18 lead. Illinois State, they started the game one for four from the field since then seven of nine getting much better shot selection, and they've done a good job. It's all sort of, they, they're feeding off their defense. As you look there at Stan Heath, Eastern Michigan coach's resume. Eastern Michigan graduate. First free throw is good for He's, Seneca Knight. He told me earlier today he was coaching in the G League, was coach of the year in the G League uh, back in 2021, and he wasn't going to leave that position for any job, but this job, a special one being an alum of Eastern Michigan. Of course, he's brought the three other schools that he has coached to the NCAA tournament. Kent State back in 2002, Arkansas back-to-back -back years in 06 and 07, and then brought South Florida to the NCAA tournament in 2012. And so Eastern Michigan hoping that uh, the alumnus can bring a fourth team to the NCAA tournament, and it would be for the first time since 1998 for this program. Eastern Michigan right now getting some nice production out of their bench. Colin Golson, Jr. on that baseline J. 25-20. Stopping the run. Sandage misses wide right on the three. His first miss from three. He's two for three. Bates looking for his first points. We'll give it up. Lovejoy, six points for him so far. Golson just scored a moment ago. Gets in the lane, the right hand push shot is good. Golson's done a nice job really working that baseline, reading the Redbirds defense, coming, giving a jolt to this Eastern Michigan offense, four quick points. Both teams have had leads by as many as six in this game with three lead changes thus far. A game of runs. The Illinois State had an 11-0 run a few moments ago. Eastern Michigan had a 9-0 run at one point, and now, Illinois State will go to the free throw line one and one. As referenced earlier, fifth best free throw shooting team in the country at 81%. This is where Illinois State can really capitalize here late in this first half. Still 6.37 to play. You're already in the bonus. And this Illinois State team so good at the free throw line. Seneca Knight among some of those leaders. The second foul on Lovejoy as Knight normally at 79% free throw shooter misses the front end. Bates, trying to drive by Kazubki. Kazubki leaning the body on him. That's the right call. It's, fans don't like it, but, but I mean, hey. that's a good strategy. It, it is, and, and well, right now, Kazubki, he's doing a really nice job making it tough on Bates. He's not biting on the jab steps and the fakes. See Ryan Peden, first year as the Illinois State head coach, last five years as an assistant at Ohio State. He's trying to bring the Illinois State program back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1998, just like Eastern Michigan. Pull up by Farrakhan. Rebound on the floor. The battle. Two on two. Now three on two in favor of Illinois State in the scrum. And I think we eventually get the jump ball, and the arrow is in the Redbirds' favor. Oh, we got a technical. I believe it's on Bates. Well, it might have been unfair, Con. I'm waiting to see. It's hard to tell exactly who the official was pointing to. Stan Heath is asking for an explanation right now near half court. So look at Amani Bates. Looks like he's pleading his case as well. Let's we'll see, you know, Jaden Johnson had mentioned he put a career high nine minutes on Sunday. And today he's already played six minutes, so he's Looks like most likely going to surpass that. Colton Sandage got the start today in place of Malachi Poindexter. Kodov getting some 
Certainly some additional minutes with Liam McChesney. And Ryan Schmidt out. we've even seen so far. Yes. And so what you have right now is you have two Illinois State starters out, and then you have uh, a Joe Petrakis, who we haven't seen yet in this game. Undetermined if he's available. He did warm up, and his ankle looks better. But we'll see if he gets in at any point. But he's usually the seventh guy off the bench. The officials are over at the replay monitor here. Haven't seen anything come up on our stat monitor on who they call a technical foul on. Or Oh, all right. They're showing a replay up on the big board here. And something happened that the crowd is ooing and aahing at. But I missed it. <laughs> I didn't necessarily see anything from that angle. If we get the replay here for us on the scrum. And it looked like it was well, on it, Bates. It's definitely on Bates because yeah. there's in the box score, it definitely says technical. Maybe we'll try to get an explanation from our officials. And if you're Bates, there's a sense of frustration too because you've been defended really well. Oh, there's a little, see, there's a little nudge there, it looks like. Yep. Yeah, we're looking it up on the big board here. A little shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder nudge. Very, very subtle. Didn't look like that much, to be perfectly honest, unless he said something as well. So we'll see All right, if right can, there, yeah. yeah oh, okay. A little bit of an extension of the arm. From this angle, we saw a different angle up um, on the big board here, but a little bit of an elbow to the chest. Still nothing uh, too. Nothing egregious. Yeah. So that's what they end up just calling the tentacle foul. And Colton Sandage will shoot the free throw. Days 25 22. He has one more free throw, of course. Two free throws on the technical. So Bates also gets assessed the personal foul, so it's his second foul. 26 22. Illinois State basketball. This is where, if you're Eastern Michigan, you just got to keep your composure. Don't let the snowball. This four-point deficit into much more now that you're in foul trouble as well. Sandage who now has ten points. Gets it over to Kazumki. Jaden Johnson. Sandage spinning towards the rim. And he will have two free throws on the tenth team foul. Sandage doing a really nice job attacking the rim, embracing the contact that was coming between Farrakhan and him. First foul on Farrakhan. Sandage, of course, fifth year senior from right here in Bloomington out of Bloomington High School. Started his career at the junior college level and then played at Western Illinois. Last year scored 13.4 points a game for the Leathernecks and shot 35% from three point range. 37% from three point range as a Redbird to start the day, and today he's two for three. And his three-point shooting ability has been really important in this Redbird offense that's relied on the three more than they anticipated this season. Redbirds match their largest lead at six. It's only there for a moment, though. A nice finish by Noah Farrakhan, his second bucket tonight. Farrakhan just game-changing speed, really good handles, the ability to change directions in a blink. Sandage gets the switch. Golson on him. Lewis driving into the paint and finishes with a right hand. And Lewis, this Illinois State offense, when he is aggressive like that with the basketball on the offensive end, this Illinois State offense so much better for it. Six points for Lewis. And a foul out top on Illinois State. Sixth team foul, so no shots yet. Jada Johnson heading out after some extended time. Five points and seven minutes of play. Still keep taking a peek at the Illinois State bench area, but it's 
Still no sign of Liam McChesney, who landed awkwardly after a blocked shot that led to a three-pointer for Illinois State, but he hobbled off the court and went right up the tunnel. Yeah, he pretty much knew it as soon as he came down on his ankle. Kevin David Rice draws a foul. He'll shoot one and one. David Rice, I've been really impressed with Eastern Michigan's guard play so far. Really does a nice job attacking and embracing the physicality off the dribble. Now it's a third foul on Darius Burford. So not only the injury issues, but now you've got another member of the backcourt. Depth issue. Yeah. Depth issue with the foul. Kevin David Rice at the free throw line. The nephew of the NBA great Glenn Rice. Won a national championship at Michigan. And then... Great years with Miami and Charlotte in the NBA. Kazuki slipping. Caromed off the glass, and Rice has the rebound. Four and a half to play in the first half. Rice lays it up. No basket. They're going to call that foul on the floor, so be another one and one. Eastern Michigan wants the continuation. I thought they would have gotten it there. It looked like he did gather as that foul was occurring. David Rice has just done a really nice job attacking the basket the last two trips down the floor, really taking advantage of his defensive matchup and his quick first step. Second foul on Kazuki and Rice able to make the free throw. Playing in his third game. Imani Bates is waiting to come on for the shooter, Rice. Played one year at Delta College before coming to Eastern Michigan last year. The other thing about this Eagles team is it's a young group. Even though there's four transfers, a lot of these players have a lot of years of eligibility still left, so an opportunity for Stan Heath and his staff to really develop them. Bates back on. He's scoreless thus far, only taking two shots. Doesn't have a rebound or an assist. Two fouls in 11 minutes. Knight pops open for three. And the rebound from Javante Randall, a redshirt freshman into the lineup. That was exactly the look, though. Illinois State wanted a wide open look for Seneca Knight. Bates, Kazubki, Arnim, Kodov jumped out momentarily, and that's a moving screen on Bates, and that's his third foul. He's going to come right back out. 3.55 remaining. Amani Bates scoreless to the bench with three fouls. Illinois State 30, Eastern Michigan 26. Five left to go here in the first half. It is Illinois State 30, Eastern Michigan 26. Before the break, Amani Bates picking up his third foul. He's yet to score in this game, but his team still only trails by four points. And we're really impressive because... You look at Bates scoreless, Acuff scoreless, and then Farrakhan just four points. Those are your top three leading scorers, just four points combined. The difference has been the Eagles bench, 13 points right now, has really been keeping them in this game and has them within four points. Yeah, Lovejoy has six points off the bench. Jeter, a starter, has six points. Illinois State shooting 53% in the game. Eastern Michigan 39%. Liam McChesney, as you can see, has come back out to the bench, but has that right foot propped up. and appears to be somewhat annoyed by well, his situation. You, you just hope for McChesney it's not anything serious because he's been playing so well, and this offense has looked so much better with his emergence. Open three, Kazuki at Illinois State. It's 5 of 11 from downtown tonight. Just really nice ball reversal by Illinois State, making the extra pass to the corner and Kazuki. Illinois State matches its largest lead now, up by 7. Eastern Michigan is led by 6 in this game. Three lead changes, one tie so far. Kevin David Rice driving against Knight. We'll get to the free throw line again where he's already two for three tonight. If I'm the Eagles, I'm continually putting the ball in the hands of Kevin David Rice because so far, nobody on Illinois State's team defensively has shown they can guard him in his quick first step. Seneca Knight picks up 
his first foul. And Rice is at the line. And 11 points against Florida Atlantic on Sunday. In 29 minutes of play, made his debut. The prior game against Florida International. And, and you would expect he's going to continue to get stronger and stronger as the course of the season goes on because he had mono the first seven games of the season. So still really getting his conditioning back. All four of his points at the free throw line. Five-point ball game. Knight, Lewis, Kodov. Sandage and Kazubki, the five for Illinois State. Knight works his way down low. Double teams. There's three second call. So it's a ninth Illinois State turnover, but that number was at seven about six minutes into this game. So they have cleaned it up a bit since then. Tyson Acuff swings it over to Noah Farrakhan. Randall, Golson, and Rice, the others on the floor. There's Farrakhan with that speed. But Farrakhan, game-changing speed and taking full advantage of the mismatch with Alex Kotov on him. Sandage will get it right back. Nice job, Sandage, in transition, really attacking the rim before the defense of Eastern Michigan was set. And Sandage, already now an Illinois State career high, 14 points. Three-pointer from the corner for Tyson Acuff. Acuff, that's a guy for Eastern Michigan. They want to get going. Very capable, uh, scoring in double figures. Basically one of the top three scorers on this Eastern Michigan team. His first points of the game. Acuff, that is, and he averages 13 a contest. Illinois State and Ryan Peden going to use the use it or lose it 30-second timeout with the Redbirds up 35-33. With a minute 56 left to go in the first half, it's been a... You know, I, I feel like sometimes a game of runs is cliche, but not in this case. I mean, you had a 7-0 run answered by a 6-0 run, answered by an 11-0 run, and back and forth these teams went. Illinois State's been able to distance themselves over the last 5 to 10 minutes or so, but look up, two-point game, less than two minutes to go, and... Uh, this is a tight battle. Well, and not only a, a game of runs, but a game of drama so far, too, with injuries to Liam McChesney. And we see Joe Petrakis into this game for the first time coming back from that ankle injury. So we have injuries playing a part. We have Imani Bates getting teed up. He's in foul trouble with three fouls. So there's all sorts of other s storylines going on in this game. You wonder with Petrakis that obviously available to play as he's on the floor. Sanders misses the three, but maybe somewhat forced onto the floor with some of the issues with McChesney being out of the game now and some foul trouble for the Redbirds. See how Petrakis performs. Lewis will head to the free throw line. Lewis does such a good job of establishing position in the paint on that feed in and continually finds himself and ways to the free throw line. Fouls on Rice. Eastern Michigan well into the bonus. The other thing Petrakis being in this game does for Illinois State is he's a 6'10 player who can stretch the floor and shoot that three ball. So you have to account for him beyond the arc. Puts a little bit more pressure and stress on this Eastern Michigan defense. Lewis now 2 of 3 at the charity stripe at 7 points along with 5 rebounds. For start of the year off as a double-double machine. And 14 rebounds in a, a couple of games. And now Illinois State into the a zone that we saw the other day against Belmont and in Murray State that was very effective, just changing the rhythm defensively. Acuff, Farrakhan, guarded by Sandage right now. Rice over the top. And the gather Jeter, good defense by Illinois State to recover. The pass was just a little off target. Two on the shot clock. Farrakhan flips it up wildly. Shot clock violation. I love the decision to switch to that 3-2 zone, mix it up, give them the zone look for the first time in this game. And they're going to call a foul? No, the, the crowd and Ryan Peter are upset because they blew the play dead. 
which I thought was the right call because it looks like that ball just yeah, went off shock, the glass. Well, it was a shot clock violation. very much expired yes. before yes. Illinois State got the ball. Sometimes they'll let it go if they get the rebound, you know, in time. Now, it looks like maybe they're checking, though. Also, Ryan how Peden. much time? Well, I, I think maybe Ryan Peden is saying the ball actually grazed the rim in that. I don't think it grazed the rim. But then I guess it wouldn't really matter in this situation because they blew the play dead anyway, yeah. so you don't get the fast break, so. I'm not really sure what they're I, looking at. I understand why he's upset because he wanted to be able to play that ball yeah. in transition. But that the officials did do the right thing. The ball did not hit the rim. So it's a shot clock violation. So they must be looking just to see the time. The time, on the how clock much? Yes. Because it wouldn't really do Illinois State any good to come back and say, oh, yeah, it hit the rim. We shouldn't have stopped the clock because the play is already over. No, you're right. They they did call a foul. Okay, that's what I thought because I saw the official put up two fingers like it, they were calling the foul on, I believe, Kendall Lewis. They got it on Kazubki, and it must have been, I, I would assume, on the shot by Farrakhan, and then obviously they were then checking to see if the foul happened before the clock expired. Yeah. Let's see if we can see it here. Yes, it just had to be on the shot. A little bit of a bailout. Farrakhan makes both. Eight points. Two-point game. Knight forces his way to the cup. Well, Knight, how did he even get that to go? He literally split two green jerseys, went right between them to get that shot and finish. How about the numbers for Knight? got seven points, seven rebounds, four assists in 18 minutes. And he's going to be a key part tonight, especially with McChesney being out. Spins around and out. Petrakis the rebound. Two, three second differential between the shot clock and the game clock here. So Illinois State after a 57 point second half on Sunday against Belmont. Have a chance to break 40 here in the first half tonight. And Eastern Michigan now into his own defense as well. Knight down the baseline, stripped on the way up, but a foul called. Knight is so good at attacking off the bounce, and that's really been one of his biggest progressions since the Cayman Islands tournament, just making better decisions off the dribble in the paint. Acuff the foul. It's 13 fouls that have been called on Eastern Michigan here in the first half, and they are one of the highest fouling teams in the country. And we've referenced Illinois State being a top five team in the country in terms of uh, free throw percentage. So a chance to continue to take advantage of this and they are 11 of 15 tonight. That's one of the biggest stressors by this Illinois State team is can opposing defenses defend without fouling? Nine points for Knight, six points the Redbird lead. There's a block. Petrakis out to Sandage who will catch and shoot but it was after the buzzer, pretty good effort though by the Bloomington native. And the Redbirds have a six point lead on the Eagles after 20 minutes of play. Illinois State 41, Eastern Michigan 35. You're watching the Valley on ESPN. Scott Sudikoff back alongside Kelly Burke inside Seth Q Arena at halftime. It's Illinois State 41, and Eastern Michigan 35. A back and forth. First half, they had three lead changes, but a, several different runs. And you'll see in the highlights that, you know, plenty from both sides. Farrakhan has shown off his uh, burst of speed here and there. Colton Sandage has been huge for the Redbirds. And uh, Kendall Lewis has gotten himself to the hoop. Seneca Knight has been terrific for Illinois State as well. And, uh, well, we're looking forward to a fun second half. We are, and Illinois State doing a nice job on the boards, plus seven in that category. Roberts have to cut down on the turnovers, nine turnovers early. But the big thing is Illinois State has held Imani Bates scoreless in this game, and we see there at Liam McChesney, one of the game-changing factors in it was early on he went down with an ankle injury, so he was not hasn't been able to play since. Other bench players have had to come in, fill roles. Take a look at some of the numbers from the first half. Redbird shot 55% in the first half. Eastern Michigan, 40%. Illinois State with that advantage uh, on the glass. 
Illinois State 5 of 12 from 3. Eastern Michigan 3 of 8. So Illinois State really uh, picking up where they left off. They shot a season high 55% against Belmont, shooting 55% again here today. Points in the paint have been an issue for Eastern Michigan defensively. They've allowed uh, over 50 points in the paint over the last two games each. So Illinois State only 14 in the first half. Uh, it's certainly going to be interesting to see how the Illinois State rotation will be in the second half because, it, I mean, it, it didn't look like Liam McChesney would be able to return to the game just the way that he was kind of posted up on the sideline. And then on for Eastern Michigan, Amani Bates, I mean, he's done nothing. Zero points, zero rebounds, zero assists, three fouls. He's got one steal. That's it. And he, he has only two shot attempts, and he largely hasn't played very much in this first half, just a, a little bit over 11 minutes because of that foul trouble. And then he picked up the technical, too, so had to sit out during that to sort of collect his emotions. But he'll be a critical factor in this second half. The thing that has really kept the Eagles in this game is their bench production. 15 points right now out of their bench in players that don't normally – find uh, uh, their way into the scoring column a whole lot, but right now really carrying the load for the Eagles. Yeah, Farrakhan has a team high eight. And then you got Jeter with six, and then off the bench, Orlando Lovejoy scored six. Colton Sandage with a game high 14 points leading the way for the Redbirds. Halftime here at Seth Q Arena. Illinois State 41, Eastern Michigan 35. Second half coming up in a couple of minutes here on the Valley on ESPN. Six-point Redbird lead on the Eagles, 41 to 35. Second half coming up here in a few moments. A trip to Arch Madness in St. Louis isn't complete without visiting the MVC Fan Hangout. Arch Madness tips off March the second through March fifth, and the MVC Fan Hangout at the Ballpark Village is the best place to celebrate before and after games, featuring restaurants, entertainment, all things Arch Madness. For more information, visit archmadness.com or download the Arch Madness app today. And now let's check out our Toyota, Toyota out of town scoreboard here in the Missouri Valley Conference. Evansville locked in a tight one. Drake has a lead against Omaha. Conference matchup. The Sycamores looking for the win over the Salukis. It's starting up a little while from now. Missouri State and St. Mary's. And Indiana State, look at that score with Southern. Sycamores off to their best start at 8-1 since 2005-2006. So they are one of the surprise teams in the Valley. Knocked off Drake to open conference play. So we're getting ready for the second half here. The Redbirds up by six. So, Kelly, let's revisit your keys to the game and see how the two teams have been performing. Eagles have done a pretty good job minimizing the Redbirds in the paint so far, giving up 14 points to the Redbirds in the paint. And on the boards, down seven overall. But So that's an area on the defensive glass that they're going to have to do a better job. Although they do have four offensive boards. Illinois State, they've made it really tough on Imani Bates. You couldn't have scripted a better job in that first half on Bates, keeping him scoreless, getting him in foul trouble, and minimizing the unforced turnovers. Turnovers were definitely an issue in the first five to seven minutes of this game, but Rivers sort of started to settle in there later in the first half. We'll see how they handle this second half as far as those unforced turnovers. Illinois State had seven turnovers on the board at the uh, timeout. That was about eight minutes into the game, and in the final 12 minutes of the first half only had two additional Three lead changes, one tie in the first half. Illinois State led by as many as seven. Eastern Michigan by as many as six. Key categories, fast break points. Illinois State outscoring Eastern Michigan. They are 9-0, but Eastern Michigan off the bench, a 15-8 advantage on the Redbirds. Second half underway in this 32nd all-time meeting between Eastern Michigan and Illinois State. Colton Sandage, an Illinois State career high, 14 points. Ryan Schmidt starting here in the second half in place of Liam McChesney. Colton Sandage continues to add on to that Illinois State career high now at 16. And Illinois State continues to do a good job of giving him pick and roll situations where he can get off that one dribble and shot look. He's 4-6 from the field. That one wouldn't stay down for legend Cheater. Sandage behind the Schmidt screen. 
Lewis up with the left hand against Bates, who, of course, didn't want to pick up a fourth foul, and Kendall Lewis now has 10. I like the decision, though. Get the ball into Lewis's hands and really attack Bates. Make him guard you. Largest lead of the game now, and just momentarily. Back down at 2 8, 45 to 37. Golson Jr., again, effective on that baseline. Jay, we saw him score four quick points in the first half. He's starting in the second half after not starting the ball game. What a ball movement. Schmidt, everything but the bucket. He'll head to the free throw line. It's a really nice job of Illinois State whipping that ball around on those touch passes, able to get it into the paint. Ryan Schmidt getting a trip to the free throw line. Acuff called for his second foul. Schmidt is a senior from Van Meter, Iowa. Playing in just his third game this season. Schmidt's another player, like we saw Jaden Johnson, who plays on the scout team and has had to take a bigger role in these last couple of games due to some of those injuries and with Petrakis being a little bit limited due to his ankle. Did play in 32 games last year, though. Average three points and two and a half rebounds, so he has seen a good amount of time in his Illinois State career. Golson spinning against Knight, up with the right hand. Nice play, Colin Golson now with eight points. Eastern Michigan does such a good job offensively of really isolating players one-on-one. -on -one. Sandage double-teamed. Out to Burford, he's playing with three fouls. Picks up his dribble, gives to Knight. Lewis, top of the key for three. Too strong, offensive rebound by Burford. Burford bounces for Lewis, lost it in between his legs, and then lost it out of bounds. How about Darius Burford continuing to be active on the offensive glass? Yeah, two rebounds, both have been offensive boards. Eastern Michigan two and seven on the year. As to the bucket, legend Jeter now with eight points. Just a defensive breakdown. Schmidt thought that ball was going out to Bates in the corner. Jeter taking full advantage, just dialing it in for the dunk. Five point game. Knight drives into Bates. Baseline, Lewis the reverse lay in. Lou is so good as a slasher to the basket. 12 points for Lewis, four of six from the field. He also has five rebounds. Bates had it knocked away by Lewis. Lewis to Burford for the dunk. Nice job, Kendall Lewis. There he is making effort plays in this game to change the momentum. Farrakhan swings it to Bates. Taking Lewis one on one. Takes the three. Fouled. And Bates will have a chance to get his first points of the game at the free throw line. This is a fun matchup to watch with Bates on Lewis because Lewis, a lot of length defensively, really trying to make it difficult. You have to guard Bates beyond the arc because he's a very capable three point shooter. Ypsilanti, Michigan native, played last year at Memphis after being the National Gatorade Player of the Year at Lincoln High School in Ypsilanti. <laughs> Look at the steal from Lewis a few moments ago that led to this bucket from Burford. <laughs> Bates made the first, missed the second, we'll have one more. I don't think we would have predicted, though, that is, he'd be scoring his first point more than 23 minutes into this game. Now, Bates, he wasn't eligible to enter the NBA draft in 2022 because he was 18. He's still 18. Still he doesn't 18, even turn right. 19 until January. He had to be 19 in the calendar year that the draft occurs as Colton Sandage with his third three-pointer, and he's got 19 points tonight. And get that man the basketball. He is on fire tonight now. 19 points, three of five from distance. 
Farrakhan over to Golson. Double teamed on the baseline. Akoff open for three, spins out. Rebound Lewis. 10 point ball game. Sandage the star today, getting the start in place of Malachi Poindexter out of the lineup with a hamstring. Liam McChesney getting injured early in the game. Sandage missing that one. McChesney. An offensive rebound, Golson out to Farrakhan. He misses the three. Knight the rebound. You're okay with Farrakhan taking that shot, just 24% of the season from long distance. McChesney was only able to play six minutes in this game before coming down awkwardly after a blocked shot, injuring his, appeared to be his right ankle. He's sitting at the end of the bench right now with the right leg up, propped up on a chair. Spin move, Lewis. Oh, we thought maybe could have a highlight reel finish, but got stripped away. Acuff to the hoop, the dipsy do for two. Burford came over on that help defense, but got there a little bit late. Good adjustment by Acuff. Five points for Acuff. He averages almost 13 a game. Sandage. Out top, Kazubki wide open. Off the heel. Knight the offensive rebound. He'll kick out. Sandage. Around the perimeter it goes. Illinois State being unselfish. Burford open from the corner. And he missed it. Farrakhan tipping it over to Jeter. Illinois State, great rotation there. Just a lot of extra passes. Great ball movement. Got a kick ball here. And a timeout with 14.21 to go. Second half. Illinois State. Led by as many as 10 here in the second half. Have a lead of 8, 53-45 here on the Valley on ESPN. Eight-point lead for Illinois State on Eastern Michigan. Taking a look at some notes around the Missouri Valley Conference. We talked about the Sycamores and had a double-digit lead on SIU. And what has been really one of the surprise teams of the Valley. Great start at 8-1. and one. There it starts. Uh, one of my favorite players to watch in the, in the Valley because he just brings that hard hat mentality to the offense. Lunch, lunch pail. Yeah, hard hat and lunch pail. Yes, absolutely. He he gets after it on the boards to try to 6-3 size. And then SIU, among the steel leaders leading the conference, and thanks in large part to Lance Jones. Eight-point Redbird lead. You look at Colton Sandage on the bench right now. He's got 19 points today, 5 of 8 from the field. And Illinois State back in this zone. Saw it for a possession in that first half, and it was effective. Shot clock is down to seven. Bates, no field goals for him. Acuff, a desperation three, but the shot clock at one. 24% three-point shooter. He drains that one, five-point game. I mean, you'd rather him take that shot than Bates. Petrakis back out there for Illinois State. Saw time late in the first half. Kazuki, Lewis, Burford, and Knight. High-low entry. Petrakis, the good patience for the lay-in. And really great recognition of the mismatch Petrakis had a, about a five-inch advantage, had the inside position sealed his man. First year at Illinois State, transferring from Western Carolina, from Wichita, Kansas. Bates takes the three and makes it. There's a bit of that three-point range that he has. Eastern Michigan doing a really nice job whipping that ball around on the reversal. Bates making the adjustment, going a little bit further down on that wing spot. First field goal for Bates tonight. He's got five points. Kazubke to Lewis. Guarded by Bates, gets by him, the left hand free for the lay-in. Exactly what Kendall Lewis has to do against Imani Bates, attack him off the dribble. He's got three fouls, try and draw that fourth. 14 points for Lewis. Bates wants Lewis to clear out. Acuff, screen set by Billingsley. This is Lovejoy. The freshman with eight points now. Lovejoy, he's got a real nice spin move in the lane. 
Very fearless as a freshman. Eastern Michigan hanging around here, 57-53. Kazubki travels. Well, nice job, Aka, forcing Kazubki to pick up that dribble and force the extra shuffle steps. Shuffle steps, I should say. Twelve oh six left to go in the second half. Fifty-seven, fifty-three, and Colton Sandage a very brief rest. He'll come on. Darius Burford. Burford hampered by three personal fouls in the first half, able to avoid a fourth here. A cuff. Weber's back in a man-to-man. -man. Away from the ball, a foul on Illinois State. And we'll get a timeout. 11.56 to go. Illinois State's lead is four. You're watching the Valley on ESPN. Arch Madness is back. The 2023 State Farm MVC Men's Basketball Tournament returns to St. Louis for the 33rd straight year. Join the Redbirds in the Gateway City March the 2nd through the 5th as all 12 Valley schools battle it out for a trip to the NCAA Tournament. For tickets, call 309-438-8000 or order online at goredbirds.com slash tickets. Get your tickets and experience the madness. Scott Sudikoff, Kelly Burke bringing our own version of madness here to the Valley on ESPN. 57-53, the Redbirds lead the Eagles here in half number two. Lovejoy. Green was set by Billingsley, knocking down Sandage, and Lovejoy a chance for a three-point play. And Lovejoy, just really nice change of direction. Good job reading that defense, and at the last minute, making the adjustment to go around Seneca Knight. Second foul on Seneca Knight, and Lovejoy for the second time in his young career has a double-figure game. He had a 18-point game in his debut against Wayne State. He has 11 tonight. That leads the Eagles. One-point game. And Eastern Michigan actually outscoring Illinois State in the second half so far. 21 to 16. Lewis rolls around it in. Kendall Lewis with 16 points today. And Illinois State, they're just better when Kendall Lewis is in aggressive attack mode off the dribble, trying to get to that paint. This offense functions much better. Aka for a long two foul by Knight. Just a two point shot, though. And Illinois State now, three players with three fouls. Seneca Knight, Kazuki, and Burford. First trip to the free throw line for Acuff where he's 82% on the season. Seven of his, or six of his nine points coming here in the second half so far. And Acuff, he's moved into a little bit of a different role in that point guard spot. He has had to be more of a facilitator than he's used to as a scorer, but really just quietly has put together really a stat sheet stuffing performance here today. Acuff double figures for the fifth time this season. 10 points, three assists, two rebounds. One point game once again. Eastern Michigan last led with 11 minutes to go in the first half at 18 to 16. Illinois State is led by as many as 10. Shot clock winding down. Knight has to launch. Missed it off the left side of the rim and the rebound cleared by Acuff. Illinois State going really deep into that shot clock. Didn't necessarily get the exact shot they wanted. And now Eastern Michigan looking for its first lead in about 20 and a half minutes of this ball game. Yusuf Jihad. Billingsley to the other side of the rim and the Eagles have the lead. Billingsley doing a really nice job going baseline over to the other side on the reverse. Stayed really patient with it. 
Eastern Michigan had 35 points in the first half. It was 41-35. They already have 25 here in the second. Well, that's the danger of this Eastern Michigan squad and the three elite scores that they have. They can fill it up and score in bunches. That'll be a third foul on Jalen Billingsley. Just the third team foul. Actually, only the second team foul here in the second half, so Eastern Michigan's done a much better job of not fouling here. Yeah, we said how important defending without fouling is against the Redbirds. Knight over the rim and in. And it needs to be more of that, exactly what we just saw from Seneca Knight, attacking the rim off the bounce, getting into that paint. Knight is one rebound away from a double-double. Illinois State back on top. But look at how much the Eagles are spreading their players out offensively to try and get these one-on-one -on -one situations. Count the basket, Billingsley, and the foul. More of an NBA-style offense and getting the ball into different players' hands that time. Billingsley, who has a really long 7-2 wingspan, a nice spin move to finish it off. Now Knight, unfortunately for Illinois State, has got four fouls. He's been having a great game, 11 points, nine rebounds, five assists, but he has to go to the bench here. That's a big blow, having a great game and having one despite being 0 of 4 from 3. Billingsley misses the free throw. Sandage tracks down the loose ball. Eastern Michigan has made seven consecutive shots. Illinois State's made four of five. Eagles lead by one, 62-61. Lewis sets the screen for Sandage. Out to Kazubke. Bates switching out for a moment. Burford, four on the shot clock, gets free, hangs in the air. Johnson takes the extra dribble. And Lewis with the offensive rebound. He powers it up and got fouled by Billingsley. And Kendall Lewis really bailing out Illinois State there as Johnson barely got that shot off before the shot clock expired. Lewis just, again, doing the effort and 50-50 things you have to do to keep your team trying to grasp on the momentum here in the second half. Fourth foul on Billingsley. Lewis snaring his seventh rebound there. He's fourth in the Valley in rebounds per game at 7.8. He's first in the conference in offensive rebounding. Put on display just a moment ago. This is the first of uh, two free throws here. He's three for five at the line. Jeter back on, Billingsley out with the four fouls. Lewis ties the game at 62. Farrakhan, guarded by Lewis. Got him to get in the air and Farrakhan got free for the J. And Farrakhan, just that game changing speed on the change of pace and able to get by Kendall Lewis, fake him out. Elevates so well off of that mid-range J. Ten points now for Farrakhan, his first bucket of the second half. Sandage to the hoop with a left hand lay in. 21 now for Colton Sandage. Really nice job of sticking with it. Sandage's old coach, Coach Jeter, said he's got really deceiving speed on the way to the basket. And there's a takeaway by Lewis up ahead. Burford for the slam. Fans all of a sudden getting into it here. Knocked away Lewis again. Kazuki to the floor. Johnson to the floor. Eastern Michigan able to retain possession somehow. Six on the shot clock. Jeter, the spin against Sandage, and he'll go to the free throw line. Nice recognition by Jeter, too, just 
realizing the mismatch down low. Time running out on that shot clock, taking advantage with the trip to the free throw line. The spark off the steal and then the dunk by Darius Burford. Illinois State back in front by a deuce, 66 to 64. Timeout on the floor. And you see there the steal and slam the other way, Darius Burford. And it's all starting again with Illinois State's defense. Like we saw in the first half, the defense fueled the offensive run. That's exactly what we're seeing here in this second half. Eastern Michigan only has six turnovers in this game, but Illinois State has 12 points off the turnovers. So they basically converted every single time. Uh, Eastern Michigan has 14 points off of 11 Illinois State turnovers. Before the timeout, had a foul on Colton Sandage. So free throws coming here for Eastern Michigan. We've got seven lead changes now, four of them alone here in the second half. Illinois State's led by as many as 10. That was early on here in the second half. Eastern Michigan led by as many as six midway through the first half. And when you have an, an elite scorer like an Imani Bates, the, the danger in playing this Eastern Michigan team is you don't feel like they're out of it at any point because he can go off for 20 points like that. Jeter, who has eight points, now nine. And checking back in is Tyson Acuff. Jeter will check out. 66-65, Illinois State. Redbirds looking for a second consecutive win overall and here at home where they're one and two at Seth Q Arena this season, three and six overall. It's a full court pressure by the Eagles again. Jaden Johnson catches it over half court. Eastern Michigan is two and seven on the year, coming off a 28 point loss at home to Florida and Atlantic. Lewis outside the paint. Spins against Colson and lays it up and in. And they're going to call a flop, call a flop warning. Yep. That's a good that's a good call. On Colson. The huge point of emphasis with officials this year. I think this is the fourth game I've seen a flop call. So you get a warning the first time, but do it again. And oh. Well, it surprised Kendall Lewis, too. He was like, <laughs> whoa, I'm way more open than I expected to be. Sometimes that throws off an offensive player. I mean, he almost tripped there. Yeah, you almost could have called a foul. Oh, sorry, there is no warning. There is no warning. See, there, I feel like maybe there should well, be. Well, there used to be. Yeah, okay. So I'm not. But so Sandage gets one free throw. He makes it off the uh, flop there. <laughs> so it ends up being a. It's a three point swing. Yeah. 22 now for Sandage. Bates. If he starts to call his own number. Over the top, reaching in, Sandage. And Sandage, he knew it right away. And that's going to be free throws, one and one. This is where Eastern Michigan can really take advantage. Already in the bonus here, over six and a half minutes to play. 14 of 19 at the line today, right at their uh, season average of 74%. Colson makes it, and then there's a foul. I think the foul is going to be on Acuff. Or no, I'm sorry, Farrakhan. I don't think I've ever seen that. A foul called on the front end of the one and one that's made. They were jockeying for position. Well, I mean, they're laughing. They're, they're laughing about it right now, Kazuki and Farrakhan. So what happens? <laughs> I, don't, I, I guess Colson gets his second free throw, but then Illinois State immediately gets the basketball, and the foul was called a fourth team foul. So he misses the second. He made the first. And so Illinois State just gets the basketball. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that. I'm sure it's happened. So what it does, you get the foul called, but Eastern Michigan still gets the second free throw. Yeah. Very, uh, Well, because he made the first one. So yeah. He you almost would think that the foul would wipe it away, in essence. But you're right, Farrakhan gets called for a foul. Huh. You learn something new every day. Or so they say, right? Not sure if it's true. 
69 to 66. Sandage working on a 22 point night. Out top, Johnson. Up fakes. Kazuki into the lane. Flips it up and in. And Kazuki, Kazuki so good coming off that curl and the handoff from Johnson. Gets downhill in a hurry. Back to a five point lead for Illinois State. Lovejoy guarded by Lewis. Acuff carrying with one hand to the hoop. And Acuff really skilled going off glass, off of that drive, gets downhill real quick with that really game changing speed. After a slow first half in which he scored only three points, he now has 12. Kazubke misses the three. The rebound by Acuff. Here's Bates. Has some space. Will step back, take the three, and nail it. His second three pointer. And Bates taking full advantage, had Kazubke on him. He's had Kendall Lewis on him in the past, and the Lewis length has really bothered Bates. Tied at 71, and then Kazubke is fouled by Billingsley, and he's done for the day. That's his fifth. It's really good recognition by Kazuki slashing to the basket, also recognizing that Billingsley had four fouls on him. Went right up with that basketball. Billingsley will foul out with five points in 12 minutes of play. So Stan Heath calling over his uh, team right now. You got a, about a 15 second chance for a, a timeout here. As Heath is in his second year as the Eagles head coach. Seven years at South Florida. Five years with Arkansas, one year at Kent State where they were 30 and six. They made the NCAA tournament. Now Seneca Knight will come back in. Remember, he has four fouls for the Redbirds. We said how good of a game he's had. Just one rebound away from a double-double and also has five assists. Kazubke will shoot two, 72% at the line this year. Five points overall tonight. That's the Redbirds back in front by one. By the way, Eastern Michigan, 10 for its last 10 when they're able to get a shot off. Yeah, they've been highly efficient offensively in this second half. Now the difference is Illinois State's still shooting 58% from the field. Eastern Michigan shooting 53%. One of two at the line for Kazubke. Bates finds the open Farrakhan, wide open. Can't make it. And then a loose ball foul on Eastern Michigan. And Illinois State really catching a break on that possession because it was five on four for the team in green. Foul goes on Jeter, Stan Heath. Thought that the foul should have gone the other way. Eastern Michigan graduate, 1988. It's been a really nice fit for Coach Heath and has his wife and him both have parents that live in that area. That was the sixth team foul, seven on Illinois State, so it's one and one both sides now. Lewis from the free throw line, short. Farrakhan lost it but gets it back. Less than five to play in a one-point game. Farrakhan shedding Burford over the top. Jeter, the oh, nice catch and the finish. What a pass from Farrakhan. 11 points for legend Jeter. Third time he's been in double figures this season. Transferred from Providence. Did not play for the Friars last year, but now a redshirt freshman for the Eagles. Knight steps in the lane, gets it to go, and the lead flip-flopping back and forth. And it just continues to make really good decisions off the dribble in the paint. Uses his really physical presence to get downhill. 13 now for Knight, one of three double-figure scores for the Redbirds. Away from the ball, this fouls on Kendall Lewis. It'll be one and one for Jeter. So free throws could be a very big part of this final four minutes and 13 seconds. And both of these teams neck and neck at the free throw line in terms of attempts. Illinois State with 23, Eastern Michigan with 21 in this game. Jeter out of River Rouge, Michigan. Now with 12. It's a first team All-State in the state of Michigan. 
Michigan. Went to Providence with the program last year, but transferring to Ypsilanti for this season. Back and forth on the odd numbers, 75-74. Eastern Michigan by one. That's the 10th time the lead has changed. Seventh time here in the second half. Timeout called by Illinois State. Gives us a full timeout on the floor with 4.04 left. We've got a good one inside Seth Q Arena. Eastern Michigan on top by one. Heller Store. Let's take another look at our Toyota out of town scoreboard in the Missouri Valley Conference. Evansville trailing by one right now late in that game. Drake. Up by 11, Indiana State. Southern Illinois is uh, climbing back in, and Missouri State tipping off with St. Mary's, traditionally a very good program in a couple of minutes. And Kelly, we've got a good one here at Seth Q Arena. 75-74 Eastern Michigan. We've had seven lead changes alone here in the second half. Illinois State member led by 10 early on. Eastern Michigan has made 11 of its last 12 shots to grab the lead here, but it's gone back and forth. Illinois State, if they want to win this ball game, they're going to have to tighten up their defense in this second half. Eagles shooting 73% from the field right now in the second half. 53% for the game. Redbirds are 58% overall for the contest. Seneca Knight, that's an offensive foul on Knight. And that's his fifth foul. That is a huge blow. Coach Peden upset about it because call came a little bit late. For the offensive foul, Knight fouls out. We have our final media timeout. One point lead for Eastern Michigan here in Normal. Big loss for the Redbirds. Seneca Knight fouling out. 13 points, nine rebounds, five assists. Redbirds already without Malachi Poindexter, unavailable to start the game with a hamstring issue. And then Liam McChesney, six minutes into the game, going down with an apparent right ankle injury, hasn't been able to come back. So now Illinois State really going to have to rely on a guy like, we'll see if Jaden Johnson maybe comes back in the lineup here. He played well in the first half. Well, the, the other issue is who's going to be the go-to scorer down the stretch? We've seen Liam McChesney really come alive in that win over Belmont, career-high 25 points, Seneca Knight has been that player these last couple of games as well, a, a go-to option down the stretch. So a player like a Kendall Lewis, or we've seen Colton Sanders shoot the ball really well tonight. One of those two players is going to have to step up, or Darius Burford certainly capable of doing that as well. Eastern Michigan on fire, NBA jam style here in the second <laughs> half. 14 of 19, 74%, and they only have three second half turnovers. They're shooting 53% for the game. Illinois State, though, is shooting 58%. And Illinois State, they have to also defend without fouling. Tighten up the defense, but not put the Eagles at the free throw line. Well, Kelly, oh. I didn't listen. Kazubke away from the ball. It's called for the third foul against him. Tenth team foul. And now two free throws for the Eagles. They're 17 of 23 at the line. Illinois State is 16 of 23. That's some of the adjustment you have to make throughout the course of the game, realizing that the officials are calling this game pretty tight. Bates at the free throw line, gets the bounce. He's three of four, has nine points. He has scored in 50, he scored 15 plus in every game that he has played this year. Did not play in the season opener against Wayne State. It's a Division II program from the Detroit area. Wayne State. Bates goes one of two. Sandage. Trying to isolate Lewis. Against Jeter. Out to Johnson. Too strong with the three, and Jeter with the inside position has the rebound. Nice box out by Jeter. Holding Kendall Lewis off on the offensive glass. Eastern Michigan led by Jeter's 13 points. Acuff has 12. Lovejoy 11. Farrakhan with 10. Coming up on three to play. Bates, the step to the right three, missed it. But the offensive rebound caroms out to Acuff. Kazuki's done a really nice job overall guarding Bates, making it hard on him, taking away the backdoor looks. 
Here's Farrakhan, five to shoot. Gets by Burford, flips it up with the finger roll that, uh, well, George Gervin would be very proud of that effort <laughs> on the finger roll. Of course, Eastern Michigan plays at the George Gervin gave him above center in Ypsilanti. But they just didn't fall. And now, one and one the other way. Farrakhan It's kind of his right shin down to his ankle, kind of uh, rubbing the pain out, it looks like. It looks like he's okay, though. Farrakhan. And now Sandage, one and one. We think of Darius Burford with game-changing speed. He has taken it to a different level. Sandage has taken it to a different level here today. His best game as a Redbird, 23 points now. Six of nine from the field. He's made three of six threes. He's eight of nine at the charity stripe. Starting today in place of Poindexter, he's played 34 minutes, and now he's got 24. We start all over again. 76, 76 with 240 and counting left. We're basically at zero. Zero, zero. Cheater. Hands it off to Lovejoy. Cheater sets the screen. Lovejoy to the baseline. He pulls up. Missed it short. The rebound. Lewis, his ninth. One shy of a double double. Sandage will get himself to the free throw line again. And Sandage showing off that deceiving speed, just the good change of speed, change of pace rather, against Farrakhan, who has his own lethal speed. Third foul on the sophomore Farrakhan. And now Sandage can give Illinois State the lead back. And you can tell when Sandage does well, this crowd. Gets that little extra energy boost, him being the Bloomington High School, uh, well, the Bloomington native and the Bloomington High School standout. He's the hometown favorite. And Sandich, he's shown gl certainly glimpses this season. Even in the, the preseason game, he had 20-plus points. And you, you saw a glimpse of what can happen when he gets hot. 26 points for Colton Sandage. Two-point Redburn lead. The crowd stands up here inside Seth Q Arena. Farrakhan against Sandage. And offensive foul on Farrakhan taken by Sandage. Just great defense. We said it was going to come down to defense for Illinois State. And a potential game-changing play drawing the offensive foul. Fourth foul on Farrakhan. So he... Just like that, picked up two quick fouls. Billingsley's already fouled out for Eastern Michigan. Seneca Knight has fouled out for Illinois State. Farrakhan with four for the Eagles. Kazubki with four for the Redbirds. Sandage. Ball in his hands a lot. Finds Lewis wide open for the two-hand flush and the foul. And what a pass. Colton Sandage just absolutely threading that ball between a bunch of green jerseys into Kendall Lewis for the flush. Only the first assist for Sandage, but he picked a really nice time for it. And Kendall Lewis now has 21 points on 8 of 12 shooting. His third 20-plus point game of the season and the sixth of his career. Stan Heath needing to call a timeout for Eastern Michigan. They've got two remaining down by four and possibly five if Lewis can convert at the free throw line. And Lewis just a rebound away from a double-double. He's done it quietly, but look at this pass. Able with two defenders on him, Sandage, the recognition that Lewis had gotten in front of his defender sealed him off. 6-0 run over the last 60 seconds. For Illinois State, Eastern Michigan has been scoreless for exactly two minutes. And there's the difference, 76-74 turns in to 80-76 in favor of the Redbirds. But we have seen Eastern Michigan, again, they're 14 of 22 shooting the ball this half. They've made three of eight threes and six of 16 overall. And someone like Imani Bates, he doesn't need space to shoot. He doesn't need any space. He's six foot 10 and can compete make his own shot. So. He can create his own yep. shot. There's so much time left in this game, so don't be deceived in thinking that a four-point lead is safe for Illinois State. Lewis will go to the free throw line where he's four of six tonight. 78% on the season. The Illinois 
Illinois State may only have a one and two record here at home, but they have played very close, exciting games. They lost by three to Western Illinois, three to Northwestern State, and then the comeback win against Belmont on Sunday. Now the five point lead with a minute 35 to go. Eastern Michigan will try to quiet the crowd. Farrakhan. Hangs, shoots, short. Rebound Lewis, and there's the double-double for Kendall Lewis, his third of the season. And Lewis's length really bothering Farrakhan on that shot. Sandage will drive and... That might be number five. If they, if they called it on Farrakhan, that would be five. They yep. do. And for a moment there, I'm thinking, not sure if that's what Ryan Peden wants. Oh, I think, on that's, the shot clock, I think but, that's exactly what okay. Ryan Peden wants because you have a young man, number two in green, Farrakhan, who has four fouls. Colton Sandage, that, that matchup has worked. He's winning that battle in the last two minutes. You put the ball in his hands and you attack. So that is to take advantage of the situation, right? Good heads up play instead of maybe wasting... 10 more seconds, bringing the game under a minute, but then you slow your offense down and don't get a great look. And so Sandage will shoot two as the and, foul by Farrakhan. And Sandage does such a good job to finishing through contact. Really deceiving speed. And one of the things that Coach Peden, we've observed through the early part of this season is he does a nice job of recognizing where the flow of the offense is and who has the hot hand. And he puts the ball in those players' hands. Farrakhan, the second eagle to foul out. He leaves after 10 points in 32 minutes, four rebounds, four assists. And Colton Sandage, 26 points, 11 of 12 at the free throw line tonight. Six point game. His career high at Western Illinois was 33. Did that in a game against the Mac opponent, Ball State. 28 tonight. Well, what's, what's even more impressive about the 28 points, nine of those 28 have only come on three-pointers. The rest of it has been all twos and, and basically free throw line or drives to the basket. Seven-point game, one minute, seven seconds left. Redbirds have had Seneca Knight foul out. Liam McChesney only able to play six minutes. He landed awkwardly after a block shot. It appeared to roll his ankle. No Malachi Poindexter today. Petrakis limited with injury. Kazuki almost with the steal on Bates. Now he does knock it away, but it was kicked. Good catch by the referee. What, no basket. What hustle, though, yep. by Kazuki. And yep. I know we've talked so much about Colton Sandich, and he's had a phenomenal game, but the defensive MVP of this game for Illinois State has no doubt been Luke Kazuki. Ball ended up being kicked by Kazubki off his left foot. Inadvertently, but a kick is a kick. And so it's Eastern Michigan ball. But look at how much time he took off the clock, too. And now Eastern Michigan will call one of its final two timeouts. Both teams in the double bonus now. Possession arrow is in the Eagles' favor. Seven-point game. Eastern Michigan, not a lot of time to work with here to try and uh, make this comeback. Uh, Imani Bates in this game today, still shy of double figures. He's scored 15 or more in every game this year. Nine points on two of six shooting. This has just been a phenomenal defensive effort against Imani Bates. And to think, too, Illinois State, their intention was to throw different defenders at him throughout this game, and it's largely been charged to Luke Kazuki to guard him because Liam McChesney went down so early with an injury. Eastern Michigan has been scoreless for two minutes and 47 seconds. Their last field goal was a Jeter dunk that made it 73 to 72 wow. in favor of the Eagles with 450 left. 0 for 4 over their last field goals for they were shooting 73% in the second half, and a lot of that credit goes to the defense of Illinois State, who really locked in with about four minutes to go in this game. Eastern Michigan, no matter what they choose to uh, shoot here, have to do it quickly. Down by seven. 
And then the problem on the other side, if you're thinking of going into the fouling game. Double bonus. Not only that, Illinois State. Again, uh, 85%. Or 81. 81%. That's still very good. Top five <laughs> in the country. And tonight, 23 of 30 at the line. It's 77%. So they're actually shooting worse than their season <laughs> number today. Hard to believe. Colton Sandage waving on the SefQ Arena faithful. He's got 28 points today. In his best game as an Illinois State Redbird. Acuff, they open the lane for him. He'll take the two. Eastern Michigan now has to try to create a turnover. Burford to Sandage. Passes out of the trap. Lewis thought about feeding Johnson underneath the hoop, but thought better of it. Now Sandage guarded closely by Rice. Eastern Michigan not fouling. Yeah, at some point you have to foul if you're Eastern Michigan. You need the ball back. I think right now you got nine to shoot. You might as well at this point now play it out. Timeout called by Illinois State with 29 and 7 tenths of a second left. Nine on the shot clock. That leaves Illinois State with one timeout remaining. Take a look at what's coming down the line for Illinois State after this one here. They return to Horton. They play at Horton Fieldhouse this coming Saturday. Three o'clock start against SIU Edwardsville. Doug Collins coming back yeah, to we're campus gonna, We're going to hear from Doug Saturday. Collins on our broadcast. He's going to sit of, down uh, with us. That, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that game. Just how the history surrounding it to, to be able to play over in Horton. Something that hasn't been done in years. And a fun one with Ball State. That'll be played at the, at the Gamebridge Fieldhouse, the home of the Pacers in Indianapolis, and then back home, non-conference game against Chicago State. And then after that, conference play, UIC. Hey, look, it's funny, the Redbirds play their first three conference games all against the newcomers. It's almost <laughs> as if they're the, uh, the bellwether for the new teams. And here's Eastern Michigan, what they've got coming up. Uh, going to Niagara. And then, then they got a nice little regional matchup with Detroit Mercy. That should be a really fun one for fans out there in Michigan. They begin their conference season in the new year. They'll have a tough game on the road against South Carolina as well. All right, nine on the shot clock for the Redbirds, leading by five, 29.7 seconds left. Sandage tips by Lovejoy. I think thought he may have had a chance actually just to grab that ball <laughs> with his reaction. I won't repeat what he said though, I <laughs> promise. At least not on the air. Lewis, five to shoot inside the free throw line. Too strong, the rebound by Golson. Time, 20 seconds, time is dwindling, five point game. Acuff, offensive foul on Tyson Acuff. He's a really Out nice control. job. Illinois State holding their ground and bracing that the contact was coming. So now Eastern Michigan will definitely have to foul quickly. You saw a look at uh, Liam McChesney wearing a different shoe right now on the, what appears to be his injured ankle, but standing up. Here on the sideline. Well, it's good to see McChesney, too. He doesn't have ice on that ankle, so that's a good sign to me that that, that ankle and leg is not propped way up in the air. Hopefully it's just a minor ankle injury and not anything really serious. Redbirds, as we saw, will play again on Saturday. Burford at the line, two shots. Gets the bounce. Illinois State, they hold on here with snap a two-game losing streak against Eastern Michigan in the all-time series. Seven-point game. Three-pointer. Jihad is good and some life. Still 85-81. A, a lot of time left still. 12 seconds. seconds. Eastern Michigan uses its final timeout. It's a full timeout here. Give us some time to talk about how this one has gone today. It's been extremely fun, and I, I referenced it 
the Northwestern State game that you and I did here here at Sefcu Arena. That was that was a fun offensive yeah, that showcase. Came, came, came down to the end. Yeah, the Western Illinois game didn't go Illinois State's way to open the season, but again, a game that went down to the wire. The Belmont win here for the Redbirds, coming from behind, winning by ten. So there's been some fun games. There's been a lot of close here. games. Yeah, overall and. and what, what sets up nicely for Illinois State is you have a real opportunity here with the, essentially, I, I know they're going to Indianapolis, but that's a neutral site game. So you essentially have four home games that you can get some momentum going into conference play if you can to, can win all those. Illinois State 56% shooting today, so season high on Sunday. It might be a new season high today. Well, the fans up there, uh, I was going to call them nosebleeds, but I don't think any seat here is a <laughs> nosebleed. It's not, you're not that high up in the upper deck. Of course, yesterday here, the women's program setting a New attendance, attendance record, record 6,363. You were on the call that game. I was here yesterday morning for that one, and the Illinois State off to a 6-2 and two start, the women's team, after last year's trip to the NCAA tournament. They got a special player in Paige Robinson to transfer from the Division II level to come play in normal. And uh, she has been fun to watch so far. She is legit. I, you, you, she's going to tear up the NBC, And you I knew think. just based on her credentials and what she did at the D2 level that her game would translate to D1. Free throws coming now for Illinois State after the quick foul. 10.5 seconds left. Eastern Michigan desperately needs at least one miss here to, to keep this one a little bit of a chance. Although two free throws still keeps it a two possession game. And a make for Burford. It's for Illinois State, they can put away games. 81% as a team at the free throw line this season. 79% today, 26 of 33. Another one for Burford. How about this? Imani Bates isn't even in this game right now. Looks like he'll finish in single digits. For the first time all season. Six point Redburn lead, eight seconds to go. Lovejoy will launch it up along to Sandage fittingly will have the ball in his hands to wrap up the game. Let's not a primal scream. He finishes with 28 points, four rebounds. What goes 13 of 14 at the free throw line. 37 minutes starting in place of Malachi Poindexter today. And he is most certainly our Carl Broman Medical Center player of the game with his Illinois State career high. 28 points and Kelly you pointed it out only nine of those points coming on three pointers today you think of Sandage as the three point shooter but he did it mainly on straight line drives to the basket and get, drawing fouls getting to the free throw line 13 of 14 from the line he was a massive difference maker and this was a character building win for Illinois State given all the adversity you don't have Malachi Poindexter who's out with a hamstring injury then you lose Liam McChesney early in this game and Joe Petrakis still day to day with the ankle injury he saw limited playing time and, and is a little bit limited right now Maybe my favorite part about Colton Sandage, he knows where the camera is. He played for the camera for us perfectly. He knows how to mug it up. Highlights. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, Kendall Lewis also finishes today with a double-double, his third of the year, 22 points and 10 rebounds. Burfer with those free throws late. He finishes with 10 points. Seneca Knight, who fouled out, still had 13 points and 9 rebounds. Eastern Michigan gets a team-high 14 points from Tyson Acuff. Illinois State to four and six on the year, winners of two straight. Eastern Michigan falls to two and eight on the year. It's gonna wrap up our coverage here tonight for our Redbird production crew and my broadcast partner, Kelly Burke. I'm Scott Sudikoff saying so long from Seth Q Arena for the final score tonight is Illinois State 87. They score 87 points in back-to-back -back games and a season high 56% field goal percentage today. The final score 87 
to 81. To watch this entire game on replay, as well as other productions on our family of ESPN networks, log on to ESPN.com or download the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.